Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together and keep it going. Show her love and support. Mariam Noor. <laughs> fall of 2010, I remember us frantically packing our bags and our belongings in Buffalo, New York to drive to Dearborn, Michigan. As Catherine stated, Dearborn is a city with the highest concentration of Arabs outside of the Middle East. My father had been seeking a stronger sense of community. At 14, when we moved to Dearborn, um, I identified as Iraqi American. It was hyphenated. When I started going to school, it was the first time in my life where I was surrounded by peers that looked just like me. In Buffalo, uh, I was one of the very few Arabs, if Muslims, in the school. <clears throat> I was aware of the differences between my peers and I. The differences became more and more apparent as the questions started. First questions that you always get is, What's your name? My name is Maryam Noor. Um, this name is kind of unusual for many reasons. One, uh, my last name, my grandfather's name, Noor, is a feminine one. Two, um, as many of maybe the Lebanese members of the audience today um, under, know, uh, there is a Lebanese um, accomplished yogi guru of some sort. I'm not really quite sure what she does. But um, I was made painfully aware of who she was as soon as I moved here because it was an unusual name. They didn't know where I was from. Uh, people had n traditional names. <clears throat> so they just wanted to know who I was. Mariam Noor didn't sound traditional. They next turned to, OK, where are you from? They'd ask me. I tell them that I was Iraqi, but they tell me I was too light. My Arabic was a little too perfect. My Arabic, the Iraqi dialect that I spoke in, that didn't sound Iraqi to them even. It was jarring to me. I didn't realize that I'd ever have to explain my Arabness to another Arab. <clears throat> As I became more and more aware of my community, I realized that the image that my father had given me, that had he spent my childhood carefully crafting of who and what an Arab was, um, was slowly crumbling as, as people suddenly started revealing their humanity to me, to me. I started realizing that there were Arabs of different descent, they were Yemeni, uh, Lebanese, Iraqi. I hadn't met any of these. It was really, really limited to our Iraqi community. This led to an intense state of culture shock. Um, at this point, I, I guess I just needed to, to fit in somewhere. I, I had always known who I was when I was younger. So, there were different ways I could do that. And one of them was um, I ended up changing my last name because Mariam Noor was something that was difficult. Even when I went to the doctor's office, when they would ask me for my last name and I would say Noor, they'd say, no, 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 last name? <laughs> um, yeah, it's Noor because that's just my last name. That's how it was. That's how it worked when we moved to America and our documents were, were um, put together. <clears throat> At this point, I had decided to change my name to Maria Mal Musawi, our family's tribal name. This gave me a little niche to fit into, although I didn't know much about it. So I delved into it. I decided if I was going to take on this name and this identity, I was going to figure out what it was about. I realized that at the core of it, honestly, 
my identity as an Iraqi Shia, it is everything about revolution and freedom through speech. It's kind of what fueled me to be here right now. <clears throat> In taking on this name, I also decided to change the way I dressed um, to fit in a little more. Uh, the name, the change of the dress, it, it, the question subsided, and that's all I really, really wanted. I wanted to just be successful in wherever field that, wherever area in my life I existed in. Um, and as the question subsided, I, everything settled, but something still felt off. After a few years of that, and around my last year of high school, uh, I decided that I was just no longer interested in sharing who I was in increments. I realized that I had compartmentalized myself in Dearborn, just as I had in Buffalo. In Buffalo, New York, I was always expected to know who I was because I wore hijab at a young age. I was eight. I was one of very few in the whole city. One of the very few in my school, and then in my middle school, the only. I knew that I was supposed to be grateful for America and their ability to free us from, from our past regime, and I knew that I needed to smile, sometimes a little extra long, to seem less threatening. But then I realized that I had the same thing happen to me here in Dearborn. Eventually, I think I realized that it was two different herd mentalities, really, two different sides just pulling me. And it was really like, I just felt like I needed to be in the in between. It was the in between where I existed. I was wanting to be the best of both of the worlds. When I settled in the in between, I felt like I was left alone. I feel like a lot of people who do settle in the between in my position, they end up just staying to themselves. It's a very lonely thing to do. I ended up leaving Dearborn. The decision was solely out of a need to be understood. I was away for about four years, until about a year ago, 2018. During this, those four years, I lost touch with my Arabic food, um, the language, the culture, the tradition, just everything that I grew up with, and it was a part of me, but it was just no longer accessible anymore. It was not far, I was only in Ann Arbor, Michigan, but I didn't feel welcome. It wasn't, I, I was, it was, there was this culture of shame regarding a girl and, and her making her own choices. After four years of being in Ann Arbor, moving back here, and in 2018, I learned most of my life lessons. I learned that I kept running until I ran into myself. I learned that freedom is self-proclaimed. After a friend of mine told me that I needed to impose myself upon those who didn't accept me, I realized that I needed to accept myself first. I realized that when it comes to freedom, all I ever wanted to be is recognized for who I am and for people to see that I have the potential to be better. I noticed that a lot of us seem to look at uh, Arab Americans who seem, who seem assimilated as, something, as a, uh, something of a mutation. And I don't know if we're allowed to just breathe for a little bit and just allowed to become the best of those both worlds that we belong to, I believe that we are we would be able to, to to do a lot better for ourselves and for our communities. I think the most important thing that I learned was that it was there all along that my regrets
come from realizing that I didn't know I was free. And lastly, as Satori mentioned, I genuinely feel that freedom is something that comes along with authenticity. When you are free, you are authentic. What comes from you is natural and loving. It's not forced. Your decisions don't have to make you anxious, I realize. If you just let go, and you just allow yourself to be, and you accept others, I realize you can just feel free. I think that's it. <laughs> Maryam Noor!